as, as you just heard, I'm Jimmy Hartzell. I work for Obsidian Systems, which is a Tezos uh, grant recipient. Who here is familiar with the Tezos currency? Yeah? Yeah? Cool, cool. And my particular project that I've been working on uh, has been the Tezos apps for the Ledger Nano S. So who here is familiar with that platform, the Ledger Nano S? Yeah? All right. Good portion of you, good portion of you. So it is a um, it is a hardware wallet. So I'm going to start out by like first talking just about some about how hardware wallets work, and then I'm going to talk about some particular issues we came into um, working with working with the particular issues with Tezos on that platform. So so first off, hardware wallets. So pretty basic. Private keys are everything. You don't want someone else to get your private keys, and you don't want your private keys to sign something you didn't intend to sign. Unfortunately, we tend to um, do transactions on these things called computers, and those are famously insecure. So how can we protect ourselves when, when literally we have data that might represent a large amount of value? So, um, you know, the solution we've got here is hardware wallets, which, you know, that's the Ledger Nano S, and it has a separate processor, its own little computer, and how it works is whenever you want to sign a transaction, the computer sends it to the device to sign, and so the keys never have to leave the device. So, instead of having to worry about the security of your whole computer, which is probably completely compromised, your computer's probably already owned by the Russians, I'm sorry, but, uh, Instead of having to worry about the entire computer, you just have to worry about this, the security of this device, which is very limited, and the keys never leave it. And the decision of whether to sign the transaction or not is made on the device. So, um, and the keys aren't even stored on the device. They're derived through uh, a, a hierarchical deterministic tree. And so every time we derive a key, it comes out the same. So you start out with a BIP, BIP39 seed, uh, which is 24 English words that you can write down on paper. Don't put them in your computer, please. Don't generate them on a computer and then put them into a ledger. There's all sorts of things that people can do to completely ruin the point of the security. And then you have a derivation path. And the seed words plus the derivation path consistently will add up to the same private key. So you can pair two ledgers by giving them the same seed. And then every time, every single time a private key is used, it rederives it and then zeroes it out. So that's what the ledger apps all do. They derive the key on ad hoc for that particular signing operation, and then they zero it out immediately. So that even within the ledger, you can look at the application source code, all the ledger apps are open source, and you can see that right after it derives the key and does the signing, it zeroes it out. So that's a, another important security thing. Um, and then another thing is, you don't want to obviously have the same keys being used for wallets on, on different currencies. You don't want to trust your Tezos app with your Ethereum keys. So the ledger itself actually uses these derivation paths. They have an app-specific prefix, and the firmware will prevent an app from deriving a key that has a prefix that doesn't that doesn't match that doesn't match that particular app's domain. Um, this is very important because otherwise, if there was an app that had a security vulnerability, it would be able to expose all the keys um, from that device. So if there's an app that has a security vulnerability, it's limited to just that, um, that app sort of designated key. So that's another important security feature. Um, now, all this is done on a very, very... Um, gnarly platform, and I'm just sort of showing you this because, you know, I just want you to have empathy for my work as an embedded programmer. I don't know how much RAM your computers and servers have. I imagine it's more than four kilobytes. Yeah? So other developers, a little more than four kilobytes? Yeah, it, it was, it, it, I was sort of surprised, but there's actually a um, security reason for this too. They want to limit how sophisticated an app can be. Um, the goal is that it, it should be a constrained enough platform that there's absolutely no way you can have a functioning app and a Trojan in it because there's just not enough legroom to, to accomplish that. All right. 
And so why do we need different apps for different cryptocurrencies? Why don't we just have one generic, like, approve, don't approve signer? Well, you have to actually verify your transaction on the ledger. If you just get yes or no, sign or don't sign, you're still trusting the computer to have sent to the ledger the transaction that you think it sent. And the whole point here is that our computers are not trustworthy. So each different cryptocurrency has different transaction formats, and those need to be parsed and displayed on the ledger itself. So that's why there's different apps. So um, when doing this for Tezos, there was a few, there were a few specific issues uh, getting Tezos working on the ledger. Um, so the biggest difference between Tezos and other and other protocols, also like sort of the different biggest issue getting it working on the ledger had to do with Tezos being a liquid proof of stake blockchain, which, you know, it's, you get assigned rights to create new blocks on Tezos, it's called baking instead of mining, um, proportional to how many Tez you actually control. And um, it's ca uh, called liquid proof of stake because you can delegate your Tez to be managed by a baking service, but you don't have to. It's very sort of fluid. As long as you have 10,000 TES, you can bake for yourself, or you can delegate. It's um, low requirements, and so you can have you know, small-time bakers who don't have the money to invest in a very complicated infrastructure. Um, but because it is proof of stake, the block headers need to be signed, and they need to be signed by the key that either that owns at least some of the TES that are baked because, um, because of how the protocol works. And because they need to be signed by these keys, then you might need to have these keys on a ledger. And so that's, that's sort of an, an interesting difference between what the ledger supports on Tezos and other, other cryptocurrencies. So why do we need to use the same keys for baking versus for um, you know storing your tes and this is a question that one of my colleagues had when I was you know giving the presentation back at back in New York they asked why isn't there just separate baking keys and the reason for that is um, it's an incentive thing um, if you care about your keys because it has your tes on it then you're also going to care about keys that are infrastructurally important for the for the protocol, you know, these keys used to sign block headers, if they're compromised, that hurts everyone. So to in incentivize you to really care about key holding on to it, they're the same keys that you use to sort of put down a bond or security deposit. And then if you end up baking two competing blocks when you have a baking opportunity, your bond will be partially or entirely forfeited. And they have to be managed by the same key to incentivize you to take as much care to protect these keys. All right, um, so I mentioned delegation. People can delegate their tests to other bakers. That creates a different, it, it actually takes two uh, operations to do that. You have to do an originated account. You have to create sort of like a little bit of a contract and then you have to delegate it. Um, this also sort of made the Ledger app more complicated because it meant there were more things to deal with than just transactions. You had to do these delegation operations, you had to do these account origination operations, and um, you know, when I was actually developing it, I ran into the 4K limit pretty quickly and had to very, very, you know, when I added support for these other operations and I had to economize on on, on, on memory usage. Tezos is definitely one of the heavier apps in the Ledger app store, it, both in code size and in, and in memory usage, and, and, and this is why. For the baking, though, that was a sort of even more interesting problem, because a baking operation has to sign block, um, block headers and endorsements whenever their baking slot is. You get assigned a baking slot deterministically based on, based on a uh, um, based on your stake, you have a, a more tes you have, the more likely you are to be assigned a slot to bake. And these slots can happen any time. They can happen when you're asleep. They can happen, you know, if you have a lot of tes, they can happen like a bunch of times in a row. Certainly not the normal ledger use case. Normal ledger use case is you're physically present to click yes on everything the ledger signs. For baking, that is not practical. So if the keys are on the hardware wallet, you need to be able to sign them without supervision. And 
um, you also need to do it securely. We don't, if you, it has to be unsupervised, but you don't want someone walking into your unsupervised place and using your ledger to then just get rid of all your coins, uh, all your, yeah, all your tokens. So, um, so we have a separate, we have a separate baking app. So there's the Tezos wallet app and there's the Tezos baking app. The baking app only signs block headers and endorsements. Um, and when I was originally starting working on this, there was, uh, I, I wanted to make very sure that there was no possible overlap between a block header and an operation, that no one could pretend an operation was actually a block header and trick the baking app into signing it. So we had to add an additional byte to the beginning of everything that was signed that made sure that it was very clear if it's one, that means block header. If it's two, that means endorsement. If it's three, that means some other, some type of operation. And, and so the baking app only signs things with a magic byte set to one or two. And then it never prompts, because it can't, because it's designed to be unsupervised. It only prompts to authorize a new key for baking. Each one is authorized for one particular derivation path. Um, another thing, though, is, again, as I said, if you bake two blocks at the same level or endorse two different blocks at the same level, that's called double baking or double endorsement, and it's punished with fines. And again, if you had a malicious, if you had a malicious actor controlling your computer, they could cause you to double bake, especially if they would then, um, if they would then provide the evidence of that to the blockchain, they would actually reap the benefits from those fines. So it would be a very sort of slower but still effective way of um, taking your TES away from you. So, um, and so part of the job of the ledger is to make sure that you only sign things that are okay to sign. And since there's not going to be someone there manually verifying it, we had to do our own verification. So what we came up with was uh, the high watermark. The ledger basically keeps track of what level the last baked block is and will only sign if the level is increasing. This means that someone could keep you from baking and getting rewards for baking by, by asking the ledger to sign something with a ridiculously high level, but um, we felt that it was more important to protect against double baking than to protect against this sort of denial of service attack, especially because that sort of denial of service attack would not actually um, benefit an attacker as financially significantly as a double baking attack might. Um, and then, of course, the, the, the one of the sort of interesting things about this is the Ledger Nano S is designed to sign individual transactions. You plug it in, you do your business, you, you unplug it and you put it back in your pocket for most situations. The baking app is different. It has to always be available. It's part of an infrastructure. And so, th and so, if there's if it if it gets loose in the cable or something like that, there might not be someone present to like plug it back in. So, what sort of things can you do about that? Um, so, one thing is we uh, we had to disable the automatic locking feature, um, and but that's not really enough because you know if there is a problem with the ledger, you probably will only notice it when you actually try to sign something. The current default software for baking and endorsing, um, the current default software um, for baking and endorsing only actually, uh, only actually registers that there's an issue when it goes to sign something because that's how that's how that works. It, it's um, so. What we recommend doing instead is uh, regularly sending, just asking the ledger, "What version are you running?" Just making sure it's still plugged in and still working, and then you won't sort of be stuck with a with a failed with a like failed signature for when you actually needed it for the money. Instead, you can like detect the problem potentially like a full day ahead of time or literally when it happens and perhaps fix it before your next baking or endorsement slot. All right, and so, so some future work that Obsidian might work on in the future is tools to help prevent um, situations, situations like this. Okay, well, um, that's the end of my slides. I've gone through this a bit quicker than I intended to. Um, questions? Yes. Um, 
So um, if you go to the develop branch of the um, of the apps, not the one that's on the Ledger App Store, but if you go and build it from the develop branch on the GitHub repo, it will prompt you for a uh, for your pin code when you exit the baking app. Um, other than that, it's important to just not install the wallet app on your baking device. Just don't have it. You have two paired ledgers. One ledger, uh, as I said before, you can pair them by in putting the seed words. One ledger has the wallet app. One ledger has the baking app. You keep the one with the wallet app. You leave the one with the baking app plugged in. Yes, the wallet app supports delegations. So if you're not running a baking operation, the wallet app is all you need. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't quite hear you. Oh, um, I th Trezor Support is not an Obsidian project. There is, an, I believe, another grant recipient who's working on that, but I don't know the details. Great to know. Um, well, I wasn't there when that decision was made, but it is, I believe, going to change in the future, right? It's I, uh, it, it'll, it'll, we, we don't want to discourage participation. It's all, it's all, it's all technical constraints that will, will hopefully improve over time. Yes. Um, I really like, uh, I've, I've been really enjoying interacting with some of the smaller bakers on, on the, uh, on, on, in, on some of the, you know, social, social forums we have for them. I really kind of hope that, you know, a lot of them, you know, s stick with it and can bake on their own. Certainly, I, Obs Obsidian is working on tools to make, you know, smaller baker, smaller baking operations easier to do. So I hope that at least some of the smaller baking operations stay around so that they can get good use out of our tools. Well, um, I mean, you're selected to endorse blocks proportional to how, how much you have. I mean, if you're a small operation, you're only selected some of the time, it's probably still worth your while. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it'll ever not make sense to, 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 to do your own, to your own baking. But I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I can't predict the future. Yeah, uh, there, there's, there's, there's rewards. There's, there's, uh, there's, the, there's baking rewards and there's endorsement rewards for both of those, for both of those operations. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's about five percent, I believe, is the total over the course of five percent per year as a total over the course of doing all the things you're supposed to do. Um, I couldn't tell you how exactly that breaks down or adds up, though. <laughs>